all had strange things show up on our pictures. Glitches, scratches, strange patterns of light and shadow. Weird images are bound to show up every once in a while. But researchers in the field of paranormal photography believe some of these photos are actually a window to the supernatural. For 30 years, Stella Lansing has captured bizarre anomalies on film and videotape. Nearly every single time she takes a picture or shoots home movies, strange images appear. Here, a severed arm mysteriously floating in front of this woman's head. Strange facial lesions mark her own self-portrait. A mysterious monk appeared while she was taping a television special about Queen Elizabeth. There's a series of unique clock-like images that defy cinema and time logic and were unheard of in the field of paranormal photography until now. I probably didn't realize that it was any kind of a gift or anything in the beginning. I was just trying to get proof of what I was seeing. I tried with every kind of camera I had. And as this went along, I asked someone if only I had a movie camera, and they let me borrow theirs. And um, that's when I started to get my very first nighttime sighting. There is usually a rational and mechanical explanation for what produced a given image on the film, as opposed to a supernatural answer. The idea that Stella was experiencing more than just mechanical failure first occurred to her while shooting these high-tension wires near her home in Massachusetts. Suddenly, this burst of light came off of the knoll where I was just facing there and shot up, it seemed like, in that direction, toward the moon, in the direction of the moon, south, southwest. And as it did, all these multicolored lights were flashing. And that's when I got this object that looks like arms sticking out. A frame-by-frame -frame analysis of Stella's Super 8 film reveals these astonishing images. A group of four men, which photo experts have named the occupants. In the 20 years since this Super 8 image was captured, photo analysts have debated its authenticity. I took the footage of the occupants to the Brooks Institute, the prestigious photography study center in Santa Barbara, California. What could affect a photographic negative like that? A stray light entering from a, uh, a small hole uh, near the camera lens, possibly some kind of after effect uh, when the film was taken out of the camera, some kind of a very uh, fine, hard and short light strike that produced those patterns. Eight millimeter motion pictures are so small frame by frame that it's virtually impossible to uh, to fake them without a sophisticated laboratory and animators. You'd have to run a Walt Disney studio to do it. A person like Stella Lansing could not do it. Even more mysterious than Stella's Super 8 image of the occupants is what happens when the film is transferred to videotape. Then, unidentified voices suddenly appear. Analysts could not explain how Stella's silent 8mm film, with no soundtrack, could suddenly produce sound, replayed here at a slower speed. With no technical knowledge of photography herself, Stella searched for someone who could explain the images in her photos. Dr. Bertold Schwartz, noted psychiatrist and author, took her case and has been studying Stella Lansing for 21 years. When I first met Stella, I became more and more curious because here is a human being that gets these things, the kind of things you read about in the paper, but they're seldom documented as one would prefer. In fact, it was Stella's meticulous records that set her apart. For 30 years, she had kept detailed logs of all her photos and films. As one went over the notes that she had laboriously collected through the years, she'd write on the film boxes, she'd write on scraps of paper, she'd collect clippings, and you put it all together, the story seems to hang together. And we have to ask the question, how do we explain it? Questions and questions and questions, but then it becomes fascinating, a real mystery of the first order. Some of Stella's most bizarre images are referred to as the clock series, images captured on film that surround such things as airplanes and church steeples, appearing at night and during the day. Strangely, when the single lights of the clock formations are enlarged, they reveal spacecraft-like images. And even more astonishing, these so-called spacecraft extend beyond the edge of the film frame. It overlaps the frames. Indeed, the time-space barrier is smashed in some way by this housewife. Ran the clockwork patterns on Stella's photographs. What do you make of them? I can find some uh, rationale in calling them a mechanical problem in the camera. 
uh, some of the consistencies from frame to frame indicate that the exposure was produced not in the camera but somewhere as a light leak uh, entering the camera or some other pattern. The pattern appears to be very similar but not always the same. But Stella Lansing still got the clock-like formations when she used six different cameras, two different types of film, inside, outside, in daylight, and at night, in five different states. She even succeeded when her camera was switched for another at the last moment. So could Stella Lansing be somehow affecting her film subconsciously? To find out, Dr. Schwartz has subjected Stella to psychiatric evaluations and brainwave analyses. In 1971, Dr. Schwartz himself filmed this breakthrough field study. He and Stella journeyed from Springfield, Massachusetts to Munson Hill to the power lines where Stella first photographed the occupants. Stella's saying, oh, they're going to come, they're going to come, they always do. And by golly, we see these two orange or reddish-orange globes. First there's one, then there's two, they're blinking, they seem to hop around. Aim my camera at it. I hope I'm capturing this. I don't know. What does this mean? This causes me to believe that either there's some type of mind projection, either she's somehow projecting these images onto the film from her imagination, from her own mind, or that another theory, which is certainly not provable, not by me anyway, uh, is uh, could things exist in another dimension, uh, in a borderline way where they flicker in and out of our dimension. 21 years later, we accompanied Stella to Munson Hill, the site of her original photo expedition. We wanted to see if Stella would get the same paranormal images under our own controlled conditions. There's some kind of interaction here. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, it's just like when I'm driving, I seem to know where to look. I mean, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, but I seem to know when to look somewhere, and I look like that, and there it is. Stella also took still photos of our sighting's producer and camera crew, and surprising results occurred at the Palmer Photo Lab, where Stella's film was developed. The first thing their technician ruled out was light flare. This is, this is what's interesting right here. This seems to have solidity to it here. Uh, it's almost an oval shape. And right here also has the same thing. That is really strange. It has all the attributes of classic camera flare. But all the light was behind Stella, not behind the subject. There appears to be some sort of a light source just breaking over her shoulder. But it would be visible to the it naked eye. Visible. It would be like a flashbulb or something. It could have been a very uh, transitory event, very short in duration, where the human eye and brain in combination just didn't recognize it. But the film did for whatever reason. I believe in what I'm doing, and I know there's something out there, and nobody can tell me it isn't.